Okay, so we're here in beautiful Mainz. It's a lovely sunny day. Um, how long have you been working at PSS? Uh, I've been working for PSS since um, 2004, so it's um, 12 years now. We're here to talk a little bit about uh, two-dimensional chromatography um, for polymer analysis. Can you tell me, you know, why would we need two dimensions in this in this world? Well, um, usually uh, polymers are characterized um, regarding uh, their molar mass distribution because um, this is a very um, important property uh, almost every polymer has. Mm -hmm. um, it has not one distinct um, chain length but the chain length distribution sure. and um, in order to correct, characterize um, those polymers, usually size exclusion chromatography is used. Okay. But um, if you have, for example, copolymers, um, the separation only according to size is not enough to um, give a complete picture okay. of uh, the complete polymer. So um, we need to add um, additional uh, separation techniques if you have uh, to characterize um, a copolymer is to couple two different chromatography techniques. Okay. Like a standard polymer analysis first and then you add on a, a second dimension looking at the chemical properties. Quite right but <laughs> not exactly. Um, usually we use um, the separation um, according to chemical composition first. Oh, okay. So we separate um, uh, a polymer um, yeah, according to uh, different uh, um, chemical compositions sure. according to its uh, chemical heterogeneity and um, we so to say um, fractionate each little part of um, the effluent which comes out of the column mm -hmm. um, and inject or re-inject it automatically um, into a um, size exclusion chromatography so um, we can get a complete picture of um, uh, the polymers. We've kind of seen some of the, the benefits of running those two dimensions. What kind of experimental setup do we need to actually to do that? We need uh, instrumentation with two pumps because we have two dimensions. Um, we need uh, an injecting system for the first dimension because we need to inject our sample and uh, we need um, a 2D valve um, which switches automatically um, each time the loop is filled and injects um, the content uh, onto uh, the second column and the second column, the second dimension column which is a, um, a GPC column, a SEC column, um, uh, needs a second pump as well yeah. and we need um, at least one detector um, which is capable to um, detect all the fractions and um, then we need a software um, which can record all uh, those fractions and um, can build uh, our two-dimensional or even three-dimensional plot um, uh, in order to analyze and to visualize uh, the results. Uh, here we have the allograms um, uh, we attained by um, the two-dimensional separation. Uh, we can squeeze them and uh, can even see how it would look like if we um, did just the um, uh, first dimension separation. And um, if we transfer the allograms um, to our uh, 2D window, we can build up a contour plot. Um, uh, on the x-axis, we have the molar mass mm -hmm. axis. So it's um, uh, according to uh, the separation according to size. Mm -hmm. And on the y-axis is the separation according to uh, chemical composition and um, the colors uh, are the intensities of the peaks. Right. right, so can you walk us maybe through an example to see what kind of data we'd expect out of the end of that sort of two separations? How, how does the analysis 
data analysis side work? Um, yeah, we had, for example, um, a crafting process we wanted to um, investigate. Um, we had two different approaches um, to uh, do this um, grafting process and wanted to compare if we really get a grafting right. product okay. um, and uh, which grafting product we get and if there are still homopolymers left or not. And um, so we um, developed a HPLC method to separate um, according um, to the um, chemical composition. And uh, we run the samples um, individually, so just one dimensional and could already see differences. Um, but uh, we could not um, tell anything about um, molar mass distribution. Um, we ran um, SEC um, and uh, could see differences in the molar mass distribution, but again, um, no details sure. and we're very interested how it really looked like okay. and um, so uh, we used the um, 2D setup. If you compare both um, contour plots um, you see uh, that the second one has a really broad distributed um, compound <laughs> And um, from the illusion volume in the first dimension, we see that it is not um, the homopolymer, um, neither um, the backbone nor the um, side chains. It's a graft copolymer and it's a very broadly distributed graft uh, copolymer. And um, in the other contour plot, we see um, there are um, obviously um, homopolymers left, that's um, due to the uh, grafting process um, and um, we have a copolymer as well and it's a high molecular um, uh, weight copolymer so um, it has a very high grafting density. So you see um, neither the size exclusion or the liquid adsorption technique alone can give a full picture of um, the samples. Only the coupling of both techniques will um, give us uh, the option to compare both uh, samples um, without any problems and even give us detailed information on the composition and molar mass distribution of each um, single uh, product or byproduct. Mm -hmm.